right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you from sunny, well, extremely sunny San Diego, We're having a bit of a heat wave right now, severe weather here, <laughs> San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Arnold Vegas, who is over in Eastern Europe in Romania. Uh, and I'm thinking you're probably the first guest we've had actually on from Romania. Uh, so uh, that's a good uh, that's a good start. And Arnold uh, spent 20 years in technology organizational leadership, 20 years in psychology and personal leadership. And in the next 20 years, he intends to continue helping others with brain fitness. That's what we're going to talk about today is brain fitness. So, um, Arnold, first of all, um, define what you mean by brain fitness. Brain fitness is basically a state of psychological and physical well-being in which you continuously learn, in which you deal with challenges, in which you continue to grow, and in which you keep on contributing for the betterment of people and planet. Oh, excellent. So, um, so how do you actually develop? I mean, because obviously we know how to develop physical fitness. Um, most people. How do you how do you work on your brain fitness? In in two ways. It's um, there, there's one part which is I would say a prevention part. There's another part which which I would call optimization. Yeah. Um, the prevention part is similar to the body fitness is like if you keep on yeah if you uh, if you don't use it you lose it yeah mm -hmm. that is true for your body for your strength that is also true for your brain is as a matter of fact after the age of 30 your physical capabilities first slowly and then the more the older you get more and more it it, it will decline and in your 70s and 80s and further yeah the same is true for your cognitive abilities. Um, but in both cases, it's not necessary. It's like if you keep on working and using and training them, it doesn't go down. Yeah? Mm. And uh, so it's really from a prevention point of view. The new thing what I added to brain fitness is, is that you can also optimize your brain because I think that we most people most of us have a very limited way of using this this incredible device and um so what i help with is people is what i call to upgrade your brain just like you upgrade your phone or your pc um why do you do that john is like well to get more functionality, to uh, get higher speed, to get better performance, to get, you know, all of these things. In order to do that, you need you need to upgrade and you think it's perfectly normal. Mm -hmm. The way we use our brain, we basically, I would say around the age of 25, it doesn't change much anymore. Right, right. Um, well, let's, let's first of all the uh, let's talk about the first part, the prevention part first, before we get into the optimization. So, what are some of the things that people can do to make sure that they're exercising their brain and they're keeping it at least, uh, you know, just like you would maintain your hopefully certain level of physical fitness and you would do certain activities for that? What are some of the things you can do to um, for prevention and maintain maintenance of brain power? Well, one of the main things uh, what I recommend is be curious. Mm. And it doesn't matter what it is, as long as you're curious, whether it's the flowers in your garden, whether it's like, what, how is your, your, your microphone being built and how does that work up to like, what, why is the sun when it goes down? Actually, that's where I'm just seeing now. Is like, why is it orange? And so it's it's it like uh, really, really being curious, but for no particular reason, just mm. for the fun of it. It's right. like like a child, or when you were young, is is like people, uh, children are always so spontaneous and, and 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 curious, but when we grow up, we totally lose that. Yeah, that is very bad for your brain. 
Yeah, no, you're correct. Because if you think about children, like, you know, their favorite word is why. And, uh, and, you know, obviously grow out of that. And we grow out of that as adults. But it's an interesting, it's an interesting thought, though, uh, about curiosity. And especially nowadays, because there are so many different things and, you know, that's going on and so many different ways and so many different ways to be curious or to to view the world around you if if you if you lose that curiosity then you're what you're saying your your brain is just uh, atrophying absolutely ab ab absolutely uh, it's it's uh, and, and 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 you're stuck in a, i i i dislike in a society the the that that they want to put every person in one box in one label in one category um one expertise area that is very limiting that that mm -hmm. is like putting people in a prison it is it, it, like you only have this very small tiny area where you're supposed to know a lot about but hey the world is huge yeah and the universe is huge and and everything is connected so Try and open the door, open the window, and 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 see what is there. Yeah, and I love that idea of just being curious for the sake of being curious. Because I mean, as you said, there's so many things going on around the world, uh, and and you've got these great tools nowadays. I mean, one of the ones that I started using recently, somebody showed me this app that you know, if you uh, you, know, you sit out the back garden and you hear birds chirping, and you just hit the app, and it'll tell you exactly what the birds are and who they are, and whatever. And that's just become something that you know on walks and everything. And I'm like, oh, there's a bird. I wonder who that is. And uh, and like, I'm not a I'm not an ornithologist, so I'm not into birds particularly. But just those, as you said, it's simple things like that that can uh, that that can just you know really just keep you continually curious. Yeah, and 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 appreciate and be grateful for simple things. You, you, I know you get simple things for plants. Yeah, what you mm -hmm. just described. Yeah, so it like appreciating the tiny things and, and i think being grateful is another thing which is really really very important is that we start to appreciate the small beautiful things which we experience every day but we we kind of totally ignore yeah no i, I agree and there's a, there's somebody i know who has a, a a film production company and they call it it's called roses now and it's uh, it's based on the uh, roses now comes from his father, who always said, when you see a, when you see roses, stop now, and appreciate them. So don't you know? Don't you? Know, in other words, take time out to appreciate things immediately. Don't sort of go, oh, that's not. I'll come back to it later. No, it's appreciate it now. Yeah, because uh, it's like what they say is like when you see. A white pigeon in a tree is like, look at it, take a picture, whatever. Because if you will say, I will see it in 10 minutes, it's gone. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. exactly. So how do we move then? Okay, so that's, <clears throat> that's, that's prevent. How do we move into optimization? What I realized is that through our upbringing, through education, through social systems, through the work environment, we... We basically are trained what I call I call a, it a brain operating system. I call it fitting in, and fitting in means when is John a good kid? When you do exactly what your parents tell you to do. Mm -hmm. When is John a good student at kindergarten or at school? When you do exactly what the teacher tells you to do. Then John goes to study or whatever. When are you a good student? When you do what what your professor or your teacher tells you to do. Then John starts to work. When are you a good employee? When you do exactly what your boss tells you to do. Mm -hmm. So by the time, that's why I say by the time I'm 25, the only thing or the main thing what we have learned is what I call is to live someone else's life. Mm -hmm. we, we, we are so fitting in and we're so used to constantly meeting expectations of those other people. Right. So what you're saying is we're we're other people we're letting our lives be defined and and kind of molded by the expectations of other people. Exactly. And that is true for most people and unfortunately for most people that will last until the end. Um but what I say is I think that is one of the main causes of 
mental illness, physical illness, all of these things, because it's like when I when I use this metaphor, John, it's like it's like you buy a dog, let's say you 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 buy a Labrador puppy, mm -hmm. yeah. And the moment it comes in your house, you train it to be like a cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, and, and, and that is what's being done with our lives. That's done at school. That's done at home. That's done at work. You say, that's why I say that's not healthy. Eh? Mm -hmm. People laugh when I say this dog cat metaphor, but it's, it's in essence our life. Yeah. So how do, you, how do you break out of that? by understanding that this is the case and by understanding that by committing to this conformity and you know, it's obedience conformity driven and and basically you're not thinking for yourself you just already start to think like the other person saying oh my boss won't like that eh? or it's like oh my wife won't like that or yeah or mm -hmm. yeah it's yeah when my upbringing was very tough my father was a military officer i was already when my my grade at school was not good in in some particular topic i was like oh now my father's going to say this and this and this right right so we're not thinking for ourselves we, we really incorporate the way that these other person think yeah and and the way to get out of it is realizing this i've been telling this to people for the last years and they, I, I, well, honestly, I didn't meet anyone who's, who said, Arnold, I don't recognize what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I, I've had people who immediately start crying and they're like, yes, yes, that, that is it. And that's why I feel uncomfortable because I'm not allowed to be myself. Right. And isn't, isn't it, isn't it amazing when you think about it? Like, I, I think the word of the year in 2023 or was, uh, authenticity, right? And everybody's talking about authenticity, but like what you're just saying now is most people are living, if you like, kind of inauthentically because they feel that they have to conform to whatever, you know, system or place that they're in. Exactly. Exactly. And that is why when you start asking people, the question is, yes. So first, when I, I mentioned to them is like, you're into fitting in and this is how it works with everyone. People are like, ah, yeah, I totally recognize that. And then I'm like, but who are you? What do you want? What do you love to do? All of these things. No clue. Hmm. Total quiet. Total quiet. I was in the same position. I was at the beginning of my 40s when my first personal coach asked me that question. And I'm verbally not an ignorant. I was like, <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's like with most people, it's like if you ask them, what don't, do you not like? What don't yep. you want anymore? What, uh, yeah, whatever. It's like, well, I don't want a boss like this. And I don't want to do this work. And I don't want to be an hour in the traffic. Gang. I don't want to do it. Okay, okay. So they have a whole list of things. But what do you want? Yeah, it, it, it is a fast, it's a fascinating, it's a fascinating thing. And I, I mean, I totally agree with you. Uh, because that's the, that's the reaction of most people. We're well, all guilty of it ourselves, you know. That thing is when we when we say, "Ah, oh, I don't like this anymore. I don't want to do this. I don't. Know, what do you want to do?" Well, I don't really know, but I know what I don't want. And so, how do you flip that? How do you flip that mindset? Well, most like like in in those cases, a lot of the change is going to happen through pain. Mm. Yeah. So, if you really feel like most people, not good enough, not seen, not okay. You did your work, your contribution, everything you do is not meaningful. That is the driver where people start to change. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, I want something else. This is something else. And I want to start working on that. Right. And also, I mean, I think one of the things, too, is figuring out your why, isn't it? Like, why do you do what you do? What's your purpose? Because uh, I think, it, 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 well, here's another thing, Arna, right? We're so distracted today, right? we got so many distractions, you know, social media, technology, all this kind of stuff, is that it seems to me that it's harder and harder for people to spend any time with themselves to figure out this, to figure this stuff out, 
right? To actually take time out to be with yourself to figure this stuff out. Yeah, and and it it requires silence. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it, yeah, and and silence doesn't mean you have to sit in a cave or whatever. It's like I recommend people go walking. Yeah, go just walking by yourself and no head headset or whatever, and and start thinking about the, these things, and then then you. You will get signals. You will your intuition will start to waken up. You you will get you will get ideas where you have no clue where it's coming from. And so that that is that is absolutely possible. But it's crucial that you're allowed to be with yourself. Mm -hmm. But that is like you said, John. It, it, it like it's like very hard. I I used to have years ago a neighbor and and. and we would early in the morning we would go running. I was into his house, whatever. Mm -hmm. But the morning he was out of his bed and in his living room, he put on the radio. And I'm like, and the radio was on the whole day. And I'm like, mm -hmm. why do you put on the radio? And it like he couldn't be with his own thoughts. Yeah, and that's unfortunately I think a lot of a lot of people today are are like that. Uh, and and if you like the world encourage or discourages you to be with your own thoughts, you know, because they're always pumping pumping stuff at you but if you do take a time out and you do spend a little bit of time with your with your thoughts what, what starts to happen actually actually a whole new world opens up for you and and you realize that that you are worthy you realize that you are good enough and you realize and and you start to discover that you you can learn much more and you, and you and and there are qualities inside of you which you really didn't know you had and uh, and so you're constantly discovering about yourself is like oh wow i i didn't know i could do that or i didn't know i had so much compassion or empathy when like i was i was in the corporate world compassion and empathy is not valued it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, or even showing your emotions, or yeah. So it's like, I didn't know I, I had that. And so it's like, it like, it's like nice. It's like discovering, uh, uh, yeah, parts of you which were there, which which were either suppressed or ignored. Mm. Yeah, and it's and it's interesting because um, because what you said, I mean. Today, like people would say, oh, we, you know, we celebrate individuality and all of this kind of stuff, but we don't really because we celebrate, we still put people into boxes and there's still conformity within all of these areas. And there's, I always call it the, the conformity of the nonconformists, you know, where the people who say they're nonconformists, but they all conform to their nonconformity, if you like. Um, so I think everybody can sort of take everybody who's listening can take a step back and really ask themselves, am I am I truly myself and an individual, or am I in essence really conforming to, to some other gr one group or another? Yes, and, and, and that could be different in situations. Is sure. that in your, in your work it could be different than with your children, it could be different in your sports team, it could be yeah, it, so it's it's like a lot of the time we play some kind of a role mm -hmm. and 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 what what i help people with is like to play the same role always is right. like to be who you are under any circumstances mm -hmm. and sometimes that's a, sometimes that can be a little bit daunting for people right it is as a start absolutely as a start it is because then you become a little bit different than the crowd yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but what I've realized is that people start to appreciate you more because they then you become a mirror for other people. Is like, hey, this dude, he's really himself or mm -hmm. herself, and I want that as well. Yeah. So then you become an example because I. I, 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 when, when I was in the corporate world, whatever people who knew me, liked me, whatever, but I was not really good with strangers. Eh? Mm -hmm. Now it's the, well, I would, I'm glad to say the opposite is like, <laughs> I've really, really easily built up connections with folks I never met. Yeah. So, so my life is, is, is really extremely valuable. I mean, I'm just meeting on the street and I talk with people and, and, and whatever. So, 
that is what everybody wants. Yeah. So, and, and and just last question. It's obviously quite. It's obviously very liberating when you throw off the the the, the shackles. I call it to, to throw off the straight jackets. Right. Yeah, I, I mean that must be an, that must be amazing, you know, when you do uh, get rid of the straight jacket and you start being yourself. And and as you said, I mean, I guess it's a bit daunting at the beginning, but ultimately, people really appreciate other people who they see as as real. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, John, the, there there is a, a research. It's it, it's in a book um, by an Australian nurse. It's called "The Five Regrets of the Dying." It's a, it, 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 it was a nurse who worked in a hospice. Mm -hmm. And for years and years, she asked the people there is, do you have any regrets about your life? And out of that came a top five. What was the number one, John? Uh, I don't know. What was it like? Not, not being yourself? Exactly. Not living a life true to yourself. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, and that's where I'm helping people. I help them from fitting in to flying out, and from flying out to extraordinary. I love that. I love that fitting into flying out to extraordinary. This has been fantastic, Arnold. All of Arnold's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Yeah, so I am this brain fitness trainer. I help people with this this, this process of throwing away the straight jacket of fitting in and living your own life to your full potential. Yeah. Well, like I said, I would go check this out. It's important stuff. You know, you don't want to be one of those people regretting at the end of your days, regretting that you didn't live your authentic, authentic life. So go check out what Arnold, uh, Arnold's work. Um, thanks again, Arnold. Thank you for watching and listening, and I will see you all again really soon. Thank you.